Dogs, they teach us so much about ourselves. I think that's why we love dogs. They teach us about love. They teach us about God. These two dogs that we're gonna look at here, they teach us about two different approaches, two different understandings we have of God when we are in trouble, when we know we have done something wrong. How do we think God treats us. Let's see what we can learn from these dog videos. Daddy's home. Come here. Hey. Hey, come here. Come here, mama. Come here, my boobies. Hey. Hey, Tuda Loda. Come here. You have a good day? Did you have a good day? Daddy loves you. You have a good day? But who tore my pants up, though? Oh, y'all don't want to talk about that? <laughs> y'all don't want to talk about that? Don't want to talk about that? Who tore my pants up, though? Is that not how we often think of God? that as soon as we've done something wrong, we gotta hide, right? It goes the whole way back to Genesis. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Right there, we can see that we've believed a lie in our hearts about God, that when we've done something wrong, we have to run the other way because he's this big finger-wagging meanie who's gonna scold us, shame us, condemn us, where do we get this idea? Who has been telling us? What voices have we been hearing and listening to in our inner ear that's telling us God's not gonna love you when you've screwed up? Uh, let's see, though, the approach of this other dog and what we can learn from this one. See, what did you do? Oh, he knows he's oh, done something he shouldn't God. have done. Come on. Come here. I'll watch his approach. <laughs> yeah, come on. Oh. You want to tell me what this is about? <sighs> oh, he's guilty. Why did you do that? But watch what he does. Why did you eat the bed? Why did you do that? He snuggles Why? right up to his master and basically says, please have mercy on me. He knows he screwed up. He has that terrible shame <laughs> on his face that we can all relate to. But instead of running away, like those other dogs, he does exactly what we should do when we've screwed up. He entrusts himself to his master. He entrusts himself to the love and the mercy of his master. I grew up thinking that my misery and my sinfulness repulsed God. And so, what do you think? You gotta hide all that to be loved. Uh, where do we get these ideas? One time I was in prayer, and I knew I was facing a new level of my own messed up, broken, sinful humanity. And, and I was like, oh crap, here it is again and I'm starting to hide, right? I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. And I was like, Lord, somehow I, I, I have this wrong impression of you that you just wanna scold me and shame me. And I had this memory pop into my mind right in that place of, of prayer where I was trying to get over that false notion of God. And this memory comes, and whenever you're in a place of prayer and a memory comes, pay attention, pay attention. And it was a memory of when I was a little boy and uh, a neighbor kid down the street had stolen a, a pack of cigarettes from his dad and he invited me out to this abandoned garage to try to smoke them. You know, I'm six years old, six or seven. How do I know how to smoke a cigarette? I don't, I didn't inhale like Bill Clinton, right? But I'm hanging out with the cool kid who's a few years older than me down the street. And I'm thinking this is great because he wanted to smoke cigarettes with me. Well, Phil's dad finds out and Phil is in big trouble. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, Phil's dad is gonna call my dad and then I'm gonna be in big trouble. So I go home expecting to be scolded and you know disciplined by my dad. And of course, a father has a right to discipline his children. But how does that discipline come across? Does it come across as love or does it come across as just shaming or scolding for, a, 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 I don't know, in a kind of wounding way? 
Well, I knew in my house, if I was in trouble, my dad would put up this distance between us. And so I scampered into the house and I sat next to him. He was on the couch and he put his arm around me and he pulled me close. And I knew right away, okay, my dad doesn't know. I'm, I'm off free. So I ran out in the backyard to play and I was all happy about it. Well, a few minutes later, I hear the phone ring. I'm like, oh crap. And then I hear my dad hang up the phone and I hear, Christopher, get in the house. And I knew I was in trouble. Why is that memory coming to me However many years later, 45 years later, that memory's coming to me because that's what I'm projecting onto God. If I've done something wrong, God is going to push away. He's going to distance himself from me because I'm in trouble. And the light for me was realizing, no, 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 no. And this is what I heard in, as I just kept opening this memory in my heart in prayer. I seemed to hear what was I believe my heavenly father saying, Christopher, you got it all wrong. When you screw up, I don't push you away. I draw you close to me like that golden retriever who knew he had done something wrong, but he had confidence in his master that he could come close, unlike the other dogs. Oh, who tore my pants up though? <laughs> they scatter, right? What is our approach when we've screwed up? Is it, I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself, or is it, I was at peace because I knew he loved me in my brokenness. So I exposed myself to his mercy. And the word in Latin for mercy, misericordia, a heart that gives itself to those in misery. Yeah, our brokenness, our sinfulness puts us in misery. But we, like that golden retriever, should trust in our master's misericordia.